John, welcome to Hull FC. How does it feel to finally be here? Uh, it's sort of, it's uh, in ways it's taken a long time uh, since I've known I've had the job, but uh, now I'm sitting here and uh, getting used to the town, it's all come about really quickly. Um, been really impressed, uh, really friendly people, very welcoming. A um, lot of rugby league people out there that I've, I've been a bit surprised by that have uh, sort of stopped me in the street and had, had a chat with. Uh, as I say, very, very friendly, but very passionate as well. Mm. Touching back on your past experience as a, as a head coach, about 10 years ago now, since then you've been working as an assistant coach. How much experience have you gained during that time in an assistant role? Yeah, look, uh, if that, that's a very good question because you know I feel I'm you know, I'm way better prepared to coach a team now uh, as a head coach than I was when I first started back in 2007. And uh, in those early early days at, at the Titans, we had uh, some good success, um, but I feel I'm yeah much better prepared. Uh, it doesn't matter what job you do; the, the only way you get better is through time and through experience and and through. Um, yeah, just going through tough times, going through good times, uh, working under different coaches, uh, you know, and just taking little bits and pieces out of uh, what you think. What you know, you just can't go and copy someone as a coach. You, you you've got to be true to yourself and, and and true to your own values. But I've been really fortunate to work with some of the best coaches in the business, and and just seeing how they just be them. You know, that's that's the thing. You know, I I can't be a Ricky Stewart or I can't be a Des Hasler. I can't be a Tim Sheens. I've got to be me, but I've, you know, I've got to take the the best parts out of those guys. Mm. Um, obviously, over the last few months since it was announced that you were going to join the club for 2025, you'll have been doing a lot of planning behind the scenes, a lot of conversations. But now that you're here, is it full steam ahead? Yeah, it's been endless. It, it, that's the game these days. It's. Uh, your squad is constantly changing. You know, not sometimes not on a weekly basis, on a daily basis. Um, you know, there's it is a different game now. We we all love loyalty. You know, I'm I'm a, I'm a uh, I love that part of the game, the the, the player loyalty and, and uh, staff loyalty. But the reality is, I suppose, you know, you, it's it's not there as it was. You know, when I was growing up. So it's constantly changing, you know, player managers are becoming involved and they're always looking for better deals for their players and, you know, players are always looking to play first grade. Um, so it's just ever evolving, you know, it's, it's we, you know, we've got a settled squad now where uh, we know what we have. Uh, there's a little bit of room there for, for to, to add if, if uh, the right player comes along. I think uh, we've been pretty cautious as in not to, to jump in and, and sign uh, you know, players without, you know, we've been a little, uh, pay, as patient as we can be. Uh, so that has left us with a little bit of scope if, if we need be to improve. Our, you know, our roster situ our uh, import situation is full, but, you know, the, the British game, I think, is thriving at the moment. I, I watch that test match on the weekend and, you know, they're, they're, they're competing with the very best in the world at the moment. They're, they're producing players um, and, you know, we're on the lookout for the next one. Obviously, pre-season starts on Tuesday, and that's when preparations will really ramp up for the 2025 campaign. What in particular will you be looking for from the playing group? Really interested to see how they how they turn up on on day one. We we had a bit of a Zoom meeting uh, after their last game, uh, and just you know, without sort of going into too much detail and, and not wanting to fill their heads full of. Uh, you know, hit him with a whip after the season that they'd had. Want them to get away, freshen up, uh, enjoy themselves, but I'm really interested to see how they come back. Made it pretty clear that we didn't want to spend time when they got back uh, getting players uh, fit. You know, we wanted them turning up. Uh, they're professional athletes, uh, so I'm very interested to see how they looked after themselves uh, during their break. How important do you think that this pre-season will be? Look, it's, it really is the only time that you can gain improvement. Um, yeah, your, your team, uh, your team work will will improve as the season rolls on. Especially, you know, when you can have a few wins along the way and, and grow in confidence. You, you know, your your teamwork just naturally gets better. But as far as uh, pushing yourself to the limit uh, at training every day, you can't do that when you've got a game at the end of the week. You know, so at the moment. Um, you know, we've got about a six-week block to Christmas. 
we'll have a decent break over Christmas, then we've got another four week block before we sort of start getting into the, the preliminary game. So there's, there's 10 weeks there that, you know, I'm really interested to see, uh, you know, who can really tough that out and come out the other end uh, looking for more. Mm. Obviously those plans for pre-season will have all been put together by yourself and, and your fellow coaches. Have you, have you had much chance to to speak to the coaching staff yet? Not a lot. I, I, I didn't feel comfortable talking too much whilst the season was on um, this year. And I think everyone involved in the place needed a, a break away from football once the season was over. I uh, have, have spoke to uh, Simon and Lasty. So, you know, we're, we're pretty much, you know, they're, they're aware of how I want to play the game. They'll, they'll be aware of the roles that they're going to play. Um, but I'm... Yeah, it's also yeah. As a, as a head coach, you you got to give your, uh, your your assistant coaches the opportunity to to have their own, um, I suppose, their own say on how how they they want to play the game as well. Otherwise, there's no point having them. We'll, we'll work uh, very closely. Uh, I've got nothing but good uh, mail about the pair of them from from a lot of mutual friends uh, and people that have been involved with them as players and as coaches. So. Really looking forward to, to getting their ideas on, you know, how they know Hull better than I do. So I'm really looking forward to getting their sort of take and their ideas on how we, we can come be, become better as a club. You mentioned Andy Last there, who's going to return to the club in 2025. From your experience as an assistant coach over the last decade or so, how do you think that that will be able to help your relationship with your assistants? Yeah, well, again, you know, working with the very best, I have been blessed in, in that regard and, and at some very strong clubs. Um, and I, th I think I sort of covered it in, you know, in that last question. You, you, there's, your assistant coaches have got to turn up feeling like they're contributing. Other, you know, otherwise, as I say, it's, not, it's no point sort of having them there. They're, they're there because they're good at what they do. Um, and I, so when, whenever I ever talk about um, and I'll, I'll, you'll never hear me talk about myself as a coach. It'll always be t spoken to about the group um, because we will work as a collaborative. There's, there's, there'll be, you know, there'll be situations there where I'll, you know we'll be split, and I'll probably have to have a say. But I really enjoy after training and after games, just sitting down with the immediate staff uh, and just discussing what just went on. You know, whether it's good or bad, and, and how we can get better. Also on the coaching roster for 2025, John Clark is going to come in as a, a consultant. I understand your paths will have crossed previously at some stage. Um, how much of a key addition do you feel he will be to the club? Yeah, it's a, sort of a long story, uh, but we're lucky to have a guy as experienced as he is uh, to come in and help. We've got, we've got a pretty young performance staff. Uh, and I think they're the ones that are going to benefit the most. Um, he's, he's over here at the moment. Uh, he's had meetings with the physio. I met with him today. Uh, we've got meetings Sunday and Monday with the rest of the performance staff. Um, I suppose just, just tapping into his experience will be the, will be the main thing. Um, as I said, our, our performance staff are young, but they're very enthusiastic. And, you know, we want to produce like we are with players, we want to keep producing staff with it from within. Um, and it's, I know Tommy's very excited about the prospect. Uh, he already has uh, had several conversations with Clarkey uh, whilst the, the NRL season was going and he's only been too happy to help, you know, just, he'll, he'll oversee everything. Uh, he'll chime in where he thinks, you know, we, we can we can be better. Uh, and again, but he's, he's a little bit like me too, he likes to, that's how you get better as a uh, whatever you do, you know, you're just listening to, to different people at different clubs and even different sports, you know, just getting their take on things. And ultimately, to sort of conclude that point on, on the coaching roster, it's new faces and, and new voices. How important do you feel that that is on the back of you know, what has been a very difficult season for the club? Yeah, I, I, I think it is, you know, there's been a big turnover of players as well. So, um, Look, we will. It's going to get mentioned, uh, no doubt. Uh, what happened last year? You know, the, the only time I ever really want to mention last year is, is how we can learn from it. You know, so I think having uh, Grixy, who was there at the coalface, and I thought I thought he did a tremendous job under a lot of pressure. Um, 
a lot of the young players that, that went through that period, um, you know, if the club was thriving, they wouldn't have got that opportunity. And I think, you know, we definitely saw some talent uh, introduced to the club at the back end of the year. We get a good off season into them. Um, you know, who knows what, what we're sitting on there, you know, there's, there's obviously, uh, it's, they're green, but raw talent uh, and, and the age that they're at, it's very exciting for us. Leads nicely on, on to the next point. Looking at the squad for 2025, a real mix, a blend of youth and experience. What are the key ingredients to making a combination like that work? Look, on, yeah, on the back of last year, we, we definitely had to add, you know, I think you lost four of your recruits, like before round 12 last year. So, you know, you, you bring those guys in and you place a lot of confidence in them to turn your side around. So when you lose four, it, it's a tough ask for the rest of the club to perform. You know, it, it gives other guys opportunities. But, yeah, you bring those guys in for a reason and that's that's to, you know... To, to get your club into a semi-final position. Uh, losing four was, was a massive loss. So uh, with the young guys that came in, I think it was really important that we added some hard heads who not only teach you how to play, but teach you how to behave. They teach you how to be a man. Uh, they teach you to be a good club mate. Uh, you know, there's a fair bit of work has gone into who we've actually signed, you know, and it's not it's pretty hard to recruit from the NRL at the moment. You know, the, the game's changed over there a lot in recent years. There's a lot, a lot of money around. Um, and to get them over here, it's, it's, it's quite difficult. So I think we've done pretty well because we, you know, it was, it was a bit later in the year. A lot of the clubs had already done their recruiting. Um, we needed, I thought we needed, um, having lost Truman, I thought we needed a halfback who was going to give us direction and experience and a good kicking game. Um, Aiden's been a, had a really good year at the Tigers. Uh, you know, they're a club that has invested heavily in halves, but he was their first choice every week. You know, when he was available, um, have worked with him at the Titans. I uh, gave him his debut uh, back in I think 2012. Uh, Jordan Rapana uh, was still playing first grade at, at the Raiders, uh, and probably one of their first. I'm very close with Ricky Stewart. Um, they were very keen to keep him there for a year. They got some good young talent there. They didn't thought that a year was long enough. He wanted two years. Um, and the competitor that Jordan is, I know that two years, you know, I'm sure at the end of two years, he'll want another two years. You know, he just, when he runs onto that field, he just wants to win. And I, I think that's invaluable with the squad that we have, you know, with the young squad we have. They, as I said, they don't, they don't just go out there and play. They, they bring these young fellas along and they make them better players. Absolutely. Now, where do you want your team to be when we arrive at round one? In what condition would you like them to be in? I imagine tip-top shape, given mm. the, the memories I'm hearing about with John Carter at pre-season. <laughs> yeah, I, I just want 30 healthy players, uh, like, like every coach. I, I think competition for places is, is, is essential for any side, um, whether, you know, it doesn't matter where you... Where you finished last year, if, if we can go into this pre-season with, with I, think, I think we'll have 36 at training, like six young boys, if the experience they'll get will be invaluable. Um, and just 30 guys going hammer and tongs for space for spots. And if we can do that and come out healthy, um, you know, we're going to have a competitive side uh, to start the season. And in terms of the season as a whole, are you, are you a, an individual who likes to set end of season targets, early doors, or you play week by week, see how we go? I, I think, I like, inwardly, you know, in the quiet moments for myself, I, I, I do, you know, I certainly know where I, where I want the team to be. Um, as a group, uh, yeah, improvement is a is a huge thing, you know, from, from week to week. It's... It's a difficult one. I sort of haven't made up my mind how we will approach that as yet. Um, but what I know with what we've recruited, we've recruited winners who, who won't, it won't sit well if they're not uh, competing week to week, with it, no matter who we're playing. And, uh, the side last year showed at periods when, um, you know, they could, they, especially whilst they had consistent halves on the field, um, they showed that they could compete with anyone, you know, and they had some really good wins in that period and went close on several occasions, you know. They lost the two halves. There was young kids that come in that was very hard on those young boys to go in and expect them to run aside. But I'll go back to it, what I said earlier, the experience that they would have gained uh, is going to be invaluable for us next year. As we sit here now speaking in this interview, 
the club is at almost 6,000 members for the 2025 season. I know you don't want to discuss too much about last season, but given the circumstances of 2024, what do you think that says about this supporter group, given that you know, with only a few weeks of on the sale period, there is such a big number of supporters and members signed up for next season? Yeah, I think it's a great sign. You know, I, I, I know what a famous club Hull is. Like, I, I'm a, I, I've been a mad, tragic rugby league supporter since I could walk. You know, I remember watching the Challenge Cup finals as kids and test matches um, against Great Britain as a kid growing up. Uh, and I certainly know the history of Hull. So uh, it speaks volumes for the club um, and it speaks volumes for our supporters that they're, you know, they're putting their hard earned down. Uh, it's a sign, it's a vote of confidence. And, you know, I certainly will be making all the players aware uh, of how famous this club is and how important our supporters are that they share in any success that we have. You know, they certainly deserve it after, you know, a, a lean couple of years. Look, it's, it's been a very successful club over the years. We're not going to concentrate on the last two years. The, the fact is that it's, it's been going a long, long time. And, you know, you walk through the corridors of, of here and, and over at the offices there, it, it sort of, it does, well, it gives me goosebumps to see what, what the club is capable of. Uh, and the fact that we're doing so well, um, you know, in, in that department, uh, as I say, the players are going to be really well aware that, you know, we want to go out and win for not only ourselves, but for our supporters. You've only been here a matter of days, but I think you've mentioned in, in one of your first points about you've already had a few interactions with fans. Are you already getting a feel of how sort of patriotic and, and religious their, their support of the club is? Yeah, yeah. Well, the, the, the first day, uh, I just I just walked down the road and... and uh, I was on my own, I just had a beer and, a, and a, something to eat at the pub and a, an old fella come up and introduced himself and was just, could not wait for the season to start. It's like, you know, it, it, I see it a lot in Australia. The, as soon as the football finishes in Australia, everyone gets pretty much depressed for a month because they know they're going to be about another five, six months without a game. And this fella was just, had nothing but uh, excitement in his voice, you know, on, on the back of last year and that was... That was my first interaction with any, anyone that I'd, I'd met in Hull. And as I say, just getting around town and doing some different things, um, there's been several, uh, yeah, just approach, shake hands and wish me all the best, which is yeah, very encouraging. To you, how important is having a solid connection with the fan base? Well, it's, it's how I grew up, you know. It, it's, I, I'm born and bred in Penrith, played my whole life there, and playing for Penrith wasn't about playing for the club, it was playing for your community, you know, and that... And it makes me um, very proud to see, I hear those boys interviewed after grand finals and, and the way they talk, they talk about community and how important it is to the community. To the community. I remember, you know, days in Penrith after a game, you know, local business people would say how their business would double sometimes on the back of a good win on the Sunday. And I get the same sort of feel uh, for the club here, you know, that it, we're... We're away from everyone. We've got we've got the enemies across the is it across the water across the bridge? I'm not sure yet. But we've got the enemies across the bridge. But outside that, it's a long way to another Super League club. So just finally, if you could pinpoint one specific thing, is there anything that you're especially excited for out of this challenge? Uh, the challenge itself is huge for me. I, you know, I haven't been a head coach for a fair while. I, I, I sort of tinkered with a while, for a while whether I, I wanted to get back into that and I probably made a, my mind up a couple of years ago that I did and, but I, I thought it would be the Super League, I thought this is, would be where my opportunity would come um, and just to get the, I played over here many years ago at Salford and I always said to myself that I would come back, I love the football that much and I love the, the atmosphere and the crowds that much that I'd always come back. Um, at stage, just probably thought it wasn't going to happen, but to get the opportunity to come uh, and coach just a, a famous club as Hull FC is, um, it, it, it's something I'm really looking forward to. But I also, you know, feel the pressure of it as well. You know, it is a very famous club, and you know, certainly we'll be doing everything to make sure that um, you know we give our supporters something to cheer about. Pretty good place to wrap it up. Thank, Thank you. you.